Hello, my name is Julien Saleron. I'm a distinguished engineer at Traffic Labs. And this video is the first episode of a series where we will explain you how works the traffic curve. The goal of this is to help you if you want to contribute to traffic, if you want to make a pull request with bug fixes or enhancement. What I propose to you today is to start with the beginning. How does traffic start? How do we start all the component and how do we connect all the component together? When you start traffic, you give to traffic a static configuration. And in this configuration, you configure entry points. Entry points are just ports we will listen on to handle the incoming traffic. Then you configure the provider. Providers are just connector to your orchestrator API. And the providers will listen to the orchestrator API to create a dynamic configuration. This dynamic configuration is the configuration for the reverse proxy itself. It configures the routers with their rules, the services with their load balancer, the middlewares, and the certificates. Now, let's go into the curve. So, traffic is written in Go, and so we will find the main package. The main package is in the TMD folder, traffic folder, and then traffic.go. Here is the main package and the main function. The first line of this is the new traffic configuration. This is the default static configuration. We create the static configuration, we add some default value, we initialize some maps, and that's all. Then we create the resource loader. The resource loader will fill your static configuration with what you give to traffic. First, we try to find a file, and then we fall back on the flags. And finally, we fall back on the environment variable. Here, we create the command. The command needs the default configuration, the loaders, and a function to launch. Here is the run command, and we give the traffic configuration to the run command. Here we have two subcommands, one for the traffic L check and one for the traffic version. And finally, we execute the command. Now, let's go into the run command. First line of the run command is the configure logging. In the configure logging, we start to parse uh, the level you give in your static configuration and we set this level on the logger. We create the formatters. And if you put your log in a file, we just open the file to write the log in. After that, here we define on the default transport that if there is some proxy environment variable, we have to use it. Here we set some default value on the round robin load balancer. We will talk a little bit more about this in a future episode about load balancers. Here, we call the set effective configuration on the static configuration. This is for configuring some default value that we can't configure when we start traffic, because we need to know what you configure. I have two examples for this. The first one is if you don't put any entry points, we create a default entry point named HTTP on the port 80. Second example is the, uh, the API. If you put the API in the S in secure mode, we will try to find if you define a traffic entry point, and if not, we create a traffic entry point on the port 8080. Here you can see that we called a special method named set default. We call it manually here, but the resource loader, when it will fill your configuration, will call this function, this method automatically. What you need to remember is that if you modify or change something in the static configuration, you have to handle the set default correctly. After the set effective configuration, we call the validate configuration. 
in the validate configuration, we do some validation, and here is the uh, main validation is about certificate resolver. For example, we verify the storage is correct and the email is correct. Here, we have a log, a debug log, with a JSON module of the static configuration. It's really helpful when uh, we, you need some support because you can just enable the debug log and give us the debug log and we can see what is your static configuration. Here, uh, we verify if you enable the dashboard and if it's the case, we go to take the static file we need for the dashboard in the binary. We use go bin data to put the static file in the binary and so we put the asset directly on the dashboard if you enable the dashboard. Here is the check new version. The check new version just verified every 24 hours if you have the last version of traffic. If it's not the case, we just put a log to say you to update. Here is anonymous statistic. Anonymous statistic is disabled by default, but I really encourage you to enable this because it sent to us some statistic about what you use in the static configuration. For example, it helps us to know which provider are used or not. And it really helps us to improve traffic correctly. Then we call the setup server. So we have the providers. I take two examples of providers, Docker and Kubernetes. Then around this provider, we have the provider aggregator. With this, we can consider the provider as just one. This provider aggregator just gives us some dynamic configuration. Then we create a configuration watcher. This configuration watcher will listen to all these providers and create a final dynamic configuration with provider namespaces. Then on this configuration watcher, we can add listeners. The listeners will just receive a dynamic configuration each time we need to apply a new dynamic configuration. And we have a special listener to just switch router. This switch router called the router factory with the dynamic configuration to create the new routers. And then we switch the routers on the entry point to change the routers. Let's fit this into the code now. So this is the setup server, okay? And we create the provider aggregator. The provider aggregator takes the provider's configuration. And then it will just add the provider you configure on the provider aggregator. This provider aggregator implement the provider interface and loop through each providers and launch each providers. And the launch provider just called the provide method on the provider. After that, we create a routine pool. Uh, the routine pool is here to launch some go routine and to control the life cycle of this go routine. We will be able to say we want to stop the go routine and we will just monitor if all the go routines are really stopped when we stop traffic. Here we add a special provider and the provider aggregator. This is the internal provider. For example, when you configure traffic in Insecure, we automatically create a routers named API at internal uh, with the rule pass prefix slash API and that called the service API at internal. So in this internal provider, we just create some yeah, internal object of the dynamic configuration. Here we create a lot of stuff for uh, Acme. Uh, we will talk about this in a future episode too. Um, here we create the entry points and though the Entry points have a start method, which start to listen on the port. We have a stop method to stop gracefully the servers. And the switch method, which will take some router and that will change 
the router on the reverse proxy. So we create the entry point TCP and the entry point UDP. Here is some stuff about pilot. Here we create the plugin builder. You know that you configure the plugin your plugins in static configuration. Here is some stuff to create all the metrics thing we need to just collect the metrics. Here we create the service manager factory. Service manager factory will be used by the router factory. This router factory, we talked about it on the switch router, will need so the static configuration, the service manager factory to create all your services, your load balancers and everything. The TLS manager to handle the certificates. The chain builder, which is a middleware chain builder to create all the middleware chains you configured. And the plugin builder to apply your plugins. And then we create the configuration watcher. This configuration watcher takes the provider aggregator to listen to all the events. It takes the routine pools to be able to launch some go routine and some configuration. Then we will add some listeners on this watcher. Here, this is a part about TLS. Each time we receive a new dynamic configuration, we will update all the TLS configs, like stores, options, and certificates. Here, each time we receive a dynamic configuration, we just add to the metrics that we have a configuration reload. Here in this listener, when we receive the dynamic configuration, we just handle the server's transport to configure. So transport is a new feature which enables you to just configure uh, the communication between your backend and traffic. And here we have the switch router. So the switch router will just call the create routers on the router factory with the dynamic configuration and then we'll switch the routers on the servers on 3.0 TCP and on the server on 3.0 UDP. It's really simple, but it's the core of the switch of configuration. Then here we have again some metrics. We add the metrics about your configuration update, about your services and entry points. Here we have a listener for the TLS challenge. Uh, it's handle if uh, what certificate uh, you expose for the challenge. Here is the ACME listener. Uh, this ACME listener is to resolve the certificate you have in your host rule automatically. And here is the log about your resolvers. As you can see here, it's simple. We just loop over the routers and then if you configure a set resolver we will try to find if a resolver exists and if it's not okay we put an error log and then we create the new server which will use the server's entry point and the watcher this new server starts the entry point and starts the watcher this will stop to listen and then we can see that if the context is done, the context we give to the start is done, we will stop traffic and stop everything. Now, when we call the setup server in the run command, we get the server, then we create a special context, uh, which will be canceled when we receive the sync int or sync term. And uh, then we give this context to the ping to be able to know that traffic is uh, during is doing a shutdown. Here we start the server, we defer a close of the servers. Here is some watchdog thing, and then we wait for the server to stop. So thank you. I hope you enjoy the journey. I hope you learn some stuff about traffic and I say see you in the next episode.